Hi students, parents and teachers. Today I'll be breaking down for you in this video how to add the suffix er onto a word and how adding the suffix er to a word can change the meaning of that word in a couple of different ways. Let's get things happening. Let's learn, share, teach. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you're tuning into my channel, uh, my name is Mr. K. I'm a primary school, elementary school teacher and a proud parent. Now, I've geared my channel towards helping and supporting students, parents and teachers in better learning, sharing and teaching towards the common goal of getting the best outcomes for students. Now, if you think this is something you might be into, please do me a favor and subscribe hit the subscribe button down below and that would be much appreciated. Excellent. Okay, so let's get into things. Let's break down how to add the suffix er to a word. First of all, what is a suffix? Well, a suffix is a word part that we add to the end of a word that changes the meaning of the word it's added to. So let's get an example up on the board to help explain what I'm talking about. Now, we're gonna take the root word or the basic word of jump. Now, jump is an action word or a verb. And if I put that into a basic sentence like I jump, it means that I habitually or repetitively do the action of jumping, okay? Now, if I get a suffix and add it to the end of the word jump, you'll see how it takes on a totally different meaning. This example here, I am jumping. I've added ing, which is the, a suffix, to the end of the word jump. And it has changed the meaning to mean that I am doing the action right now, okay? Um, it's continuing as I speak. So there you go. You can see how adding a suffix can change the meaning of a word. Here's another example, okay? Uh, I jumped. Now, I've added ed on the end of jump here. And now the verb takes on the meaning that it's finished, okay? So I jumped. The action of jumping has finished before now when I'm talking, okay? So there you go. Another example of how adding a suffix onto the end of a word can change its meaning. Now, let's talk more specifically about the suffix er and what type of meaning it gives words or how does it change the meaning of words. It changes the meaning of words in two ways. We're gonna have a look at one of them now. Now, if you add an ER to the end of the basic or infinitive form of a verb, you're changing the meaning of the word going from an action towards a noun, okay? And if you remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing. Um, and it communicates the person who does that action, okay? What are you talking about, Miss Kate? Well, don't worry. I've got some examples here to show what I'm talking about. So let's take the root word, uh, teach. And we're going to now put the suffix er on the word teach. Now, teach is a verb. It's a doing word normally. But if we add the uh, er on the word end of um, this verb, infinitive form, it says that, the person is the doer of teaching, right? So ER communicates the person who does that action, right? So in this case, I'm a teacher. I'm a doer of teaching. Cool. Now, the basic form of a verb, how can you check that you've got that? So you can build on the suffix to the end, okay? How do you know and how can you check that you've got that basic form? Well, an easy way is to add the word to before the verb and see if it makes sense. So example, uh, I want to teach. Okay, does that sound right? Yeah, it does. Okay, but if I had another form of the word teach and I put on, had it something like this, I want to teaching, does that sound right? No, it doesn't. So, uh, obviously, teaching is not the infinitive form of the verb or the basic form because it doesn't sound right when I've put it after the word to, okay? Awesome. So, that's how to check if you have got the infinitive or basic form to build on the suffix to. 
Excellent. Let's keep moving. So that's adding ER onto a verb. Now, the next one, adding ER onto the end of an adjective actually communicates more of that adjective. So what does that mean, Mr. K? Well, let's have a look at an example. Okay, so I've got the root word here of loud. Now, loud is an adjective. It describes um, how noisy something is. Okay, now if I put an ER on the end of loud, it communicates that it's more loud. Okay, and we normally use it for comparing things. Like example, I am louder than uh, Urkel, my friends. Okay, so there you have it. You add the suffix er onto the end of an adjective, it means more of that adjective. Okay, I could say something like this Mr. K, I can't hear you. Speak louder. Okay, more loud. Now, why don't we put more in front of loud and just say, Mr. K, speak more loud? Well, the reason is, is because we don't put more in front of uh, adjectives that are less than three syllables, okay? If it's, if it's an adjective that's less than three syllables, we actually put ER on the end of that adjective to communicate more of that adjective. If the adjective is three syllables or more, we do put more in the front of that adjective and we don't put ER on the end. I've got an example of what I'm talking about here. Um, beautiful. How many syllables does beautiful have? Well, let's do our syllable check by putting our hand under our chin. And each time that we say a syllable, our chin should touch our hand. So let's say beautiful. Ah, it's got three syllables in it. So because it's got three syllables in it, if we were to say more of this adjective, we wouldn't put, e, put ER on the end, okay? We would put more in front of it like this. There we go, more beautiful. That sounds right, doesn't, doesn't it? We don't say beautifuler. Ooh, sounds horrible. But loud, how many syllables does, la syllables does loud have? Well, loud oh, has one syllable. So because it's less than three syllables, Okay, we add ER on the end to communicate. We want to say more of that adjective. Okay, great. Excellent. Hope that makes sense so far. Let's keep going. Okay, so uh, adding ER, what are the spelling rules? Well, rule number one, here it is. When words end in a consonant, vowel, consonant, okay, letter combination, we normally stress that part of the word, okay, and we double the last consonant, okay, then we add ER. What are you saying, Mr. K? Well, I'll give you an example now. So, the word we're going to start with is the word shop. Now, shop, the last three letters, consonant, vowel, consonant, ah, so it meets our criteria or what we're looking for, and the rule says that we've got to basically double the last consonant, so double the P, and then add ER. So let's do that. Shop, oh, and remember, shop is, well, in this case, to do the action of shopping, or the verb, it's a verb, it means a person who does the action of, of shopping. So here we go. That's how we would spell shopper. He is a shopper, okay, or a supermarket shoppers. Yeah, good. So there you go. You can see I've actually highlighted the consonants in blue and also the adjective in green and the suffix, which I've added on to the end, I've highlighted in red. And you can see I've doubled the last consonant, which is the P. Excellent. So that's how we would add ER, the ER suffix to a vowel, con sorry, a consonant vowel consonant ending um, word. Let's get another example. Fact. Oh. There we go, consonant, vowel, consonant. Uh, we double the last consonant and add ER, fatter. Excellent. Okay, on to rule two of how to add ER to a word. Um, when the word ends with the letter E, we add only the R, okay? So let's have an exa look at an example. The word dance ends in letter E. So in this case, we would just add the R. Okay, so here we go. There we go. Dancer. 
Very good. Here's another example. Large. Now this one's an adjective, so it's not a verb like dance. So um, large, larger, we want to say that it's more large. Okay. So in this case, it ends in an E, so we just add an R. So let's have a look at an example here. Yep, excellent. We've just added the R. Fantastic. On to uh, rule number three. Oh, I've got a bit ahead of myself here as well. Now, when a word ends with the letter Y and there is a consonant before the letter Y, okay, we change the Y into an I and then we add ER. Let's have a look at the example. Okay, so the example I've got here is the word copy. Now, the, it ends in a Y and the letter before the Y is a consonant, letter P is a consonant. So in this case, we would change the Y into an I and add ER, just like this. Excellent. Here's another example. Okay, happy. Now, happy is an adjective. So we're going to say add ER to say more happy, right? Which, you know, we don't say more happy, but we add ER on the end to say happier. And thus, we change the Y into an I and add ER. Excellent. Now, you have to note here as well, I've got some uh, exceptions to this rule. They're words like flyer and fryer. Okay, in those cases, we don't uh, change the Y into an I and add ER for those words. Excellent. So just be aware there are exceptions. Cool. On to rule number four. Now, rule number four says that when the verb or the word, I should say, it could be a, a, a what do you call it? A adjective as well. When a verb or a word or an adjective ends with a Y and there is a vowel before it, we simply add ER to the verb. Um, there's a couple of reasons around this, but one reason particularly is that um, so in English we treat Y sometimes like an, a vowel. So it's sort of like vowel, vowel at the end. In this case, what we do is we would just add ER. So let's have a look at some examples. So there we go. Example number one, play. Okay. Last letter is Y. Second last letter, the letter before Y is a vowel. So we just add ER to make the word player. Uh, here's another example, stay. Um, and that one has a Y at the end and the letter before it is a vowel. So we just add ER. So spray. Oh, mm, gee. A bit of a misspelling, isn't it? But anyway, it should be stayer, or uh, maybe the first word should be spray. But anyway, I think you get the idea. Excellent. Now, on to rule number five. Um, when a word ends with two consonants, we just add ER. Okay, so let's get some examples up of that. Jump, MP, last two letters, both consonants, we just add ER. Jumper, okay. That jumper uh, got one of the largest jumps in the Olympics. Um, next one, tall. Oh, an adjective. Great. So two consonants in the end, two L's, uh, following the floss rule, if you're aware of that. And we just add ER, taller. Fantastic. Okay. Now, in summary, a suffix is a word part that we add to the end of a word to change its meaning. Okay. Also, the ER suffix when added to the end of a verb uh, changes the meaning of that verb to mean or to communicate the person who does that action. When we add ER to the end of an adjective, okay, of two syllables or less, it actually communicates that um, more, that we're trying to say more of that adjective. And it's normally using, we normally use it for comparisons, okay? So like example, I am taller than Urkel. Urkel's not here, but anyway. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> the first rule we came up with was uh, this, that basically if a um, word ends in, and I've got verb here, but if, if a word ends in a consonant, vowel, consonant uh, combination, then we would double the last consonant and add the ER. Then the next rule we came up with was when a word ends with the letter E, we just add the R to the end, like dancer we, we had, and uh, what else was there? 
can't remember the last one. But anyway, on to the next one. The other rule we came up to, with was when a word ends with the letter Y and there is a consonant before it, the Y changes into an I and we add ER. But we also noted there are some exceptions with that rule. And we also talked about the rule that when Y when a word ends with a Y and there is a vowel before it, we simply add ER to that verb or word. Okay. Um, and then the last couple of things, when a verb ends with two consonants, we just add ER. And finally, if you don't know, then just add ER. Okay. You got a word that you want to kind of like put an ER onto, but you don't know how to do it. Just do it. Okay. Great. Excellent. Well, I hope that helps you with your spelling and helps you with knowing how to communicate um, in English a little bit better and improve your writing. Excellent. Listen, thanks for watching today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching one of my videos. If you've enjoyed the content or you just want to show your support, please just click the subscribe button down below. You hitting the subscribe button lets me know that you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Subscribe.